What's going on, everyone? Happy Saturday. Welcome to another edition of Back Your Play with Q. As always, I'm your host, Rich Quinones, coming at you live on TV, Delmarva 14.1 in the first state, 9 to 9.30 every Saturday. And uh, there's no place we'd rather be. So hope everyone had a good sports week. You're enjoying your weekend. I know the weather's been a little nasty, right, with the Phillies, you know, their home opener being postponed. It's amazing, too, with baseball, right, where all of a sudden – They'll wait six, seven, eight hours. They'll decide, boom, game's going to be postponed. Game's going to be canceled. Utterly ridiculous, but that's baseball for you. Uh, we'll uh, mix in a little baseball. Second portion of the show, as always, get social with us, uh, at Rich Q on Q, Twitter, IG, BYP on uh, YouTube, uh, the uh, at Rich Q on Q channel. You guys have been fantastic. I want to get into... Uh, some NFL news and notes today. Uh, you had the national championship game, which I think the final four was a great uh, weekend. Now, I was calling the games in Atlantic City, but what was interesting about the final four was, you know, UConn rolls against Miami. They cover that number, which we expected. And then you turn around and you got FAU up 14 against San Diego State. And then San Diego State comes roaring back. They cover the number. They went on the buzzer beater by Butler. Little base round, uh, baseline J. Uh, at the buzzer, and uh, you get a, I would say, an okay matchup Monday night. Th th this game didn't have a, you know, a substantial amount of drama. It, it, it did it right. I mean, UConn start to flex their muscle. Hurley knows how to coach. Uh, San Diego State, they needed to be able to capitalize on three-point shot to kind of stay within the game and they started to fade a little bit. The shots weren't falling. They had that horrible drought, which seemed like forever where they could not buy a bucket. Uh, UConn obviously took advantage of that because that's what the very good teams do. And they were able to capitalize on a couple of, uh, well, I should say a lot of misses. And then they just started to kind of just pull away because that's what the great teams do. UConn was able to cover in every single solitary game in the tournament in March Madness. And it kind of showed you how they flexed their muscle even though San, uh, San Diego State got it to within single digits, uh, I thought they need to get under 10 with about three to go. Uh, they chipped away at that, you know, that big lead. UConn just flexed their muscle. Their inside presence uh, with their forward, you know, they, they were able to knock down some big-time shots during the game. They're just too good. They were just too good of a team. And I think you kind of saw that um, start to put itself together in that contest. And, as I alluded to, they were able to kind of do anything they wanted to do, especially, you know, with their backcourt, uh, Jackson and, and, and Hawkins and Sonoga, the, the, the forward. Um, <clears throat> they know how to spread the floor. So I didn't think it was going to be a close game. And you saw UConn start to pull away and cover. So congratulations to the Huskies with a, another national championship. By the way, Florida stayed in the final four. They're going to kick themselves. I'm sorry, Florida. Atlantic in the final four they're going to kick themselves because they were up by 14 and couldn't close the deal hey by the way just a reminder our Saturday edition of BYP from our very good friends over at played against sports you've heard me talk about them for years check them out online visit the store 1450 Clemich Bridge Road in Deptford New Jersey seven days a week in-store shopping in-store pickup they've got used equipment sports gear merchandise clothing hats t-shirts uh, jerseys, baseball gear, lacrosse, field hockey, anything your little heart desires, especially for if you have kids that play youth sports uh, and they pay good cash for used merchandise as well. So as always, Saturday edition of BYP from our very good friends over at Play It Again Sports in Denver, New Jersey, 1450 Clemich Bridge Road. Uh, check them out in South Jersey. All right, so you had the uh, national championship and then uh, baseball starting to pick up a little bit, right? We're a handful of games in. Um, not a bad run of late that we saw from uh, Tampa Bay undefeated. The Braves are playing well. Phillies with some issues. Mets with some issues. You know, Yankees are the Yanks. But I wanted to get into uh, a couple things. I wanted to get into this, uh, this in, you know, debate in the NBA when it comes to the MVP. And clearly, for my money right now, the MVP – of the National Basketball Association, and it's not even close, is six or center Joel Embiid. It's really not debatable, folks. And I just think it's comical that we're even trying to have this discussion. I mean, his numbers, 
I pulled them up. I'm going to read them to you in a second. They're absolutely staggering what he's been able to do this year. Um, he's averaging 33 points per game. 10.2 rebounds. He's shooting 85% from the free throw line. 54% from the field, 34% from beyond the arc for a big man. And people want to criticize him because of the load management. They want to take points away from him. And I know the analytical, the stat geeks, you know, they look at certain things. I mean, the Sixers have had one of the best records in the NBA over the past four months. Just to tell you that this is pretty much a done deal, this race over Jokic, uh, over uh, Luka, over Giannis, over Brown, Tatum, it's in beat, period. Over Durant, it's in beat. Lock it in, pencil it in, bookmark it, whatever you have to do. His odds went from minus 250 to minus 1,000. This past Tuesday, they were sitting at minus 210. Then they dropped to minus 600 on Wednesday. Now they sit at minus 1,000 um, as of Friday. Right. So it's a Saturday morning as we speak, but still that kind of tells you where we're at. He's absolutely been dominant. He's seven feet plus. Uh, he can put the ball on the floor. He can play with his back against the basket. Uh, he does whatever the Sixers need him to do. So the, the stat geeks, the analytics, they'll look in this and they'll say, well, you know, look at the like in baseball, the, 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 the wins above replacement, the war. Right. And what, how do you contribute to your team's um, record and win loss record if you take Embiid right now off the Philadelphia 76ers do you think they're the three seed I mean where are they at he just put a 50 against the Boston Celtics right I mean the numbers are starting to rival what Wilt Wilt put up what Shaq pulled up um you know Russell certain years you know Elijah Wine never 33.3 I mean it's Wilt was dominant Wilt averaged 50 points in a game one season right so uh you know, it, it's, I think it's time to really look at him beat and say, this, this guy, even though he dealt with some injury issues early on in his career, I mean, he, he's, he's an, a great center and he's playing himself right into the Basketball Hall of Fame. Now, obviously, you can argue, you know, Giannis with Milwaukee and Brown Tatum, Boston, and then, and, and then Joker with Denver, who's starting to fade back a little bit. But maybe I'm biased because we see a lot of the Sixers on the East Coast. I just don't believe anyone can stop Embiid. They got a double, they got a triple. And for my money, when the game's on the line, who do the Sixers turn to? They turn to Joel Embiid. And you could have made the case that Embiid should have won the MVP last year. And here's another thing. Are the voters more inclined to give it to Joker to have him win it three straight years, which we haven't seen since Bird did it in the 80s? Or is this the a la Carl Malone, Michael Jordan debate where you can give it to Jordan every single solitary year. Like you can give the MVP in the AL to Mike Trout every single solitary year. Uh, maybe now over the next couple of years, it'll be for Otani. So do we hold that against him, right? And the other thing is you're going to have people vote for Joker because they want him to win three straight years. So there you got that West Coast bias a little bit. And, and I'm not a big proponent of it. I'm not really a big fan of it. I think in Bede's numbers, like I said, 33.3, 10 rebounds. 54% from the floor from a big man. The numbers speak for themselves. Now, the only caveat, the only difference is if you're a Philadelphia 76ers fan, I would tell you right now, they can care less about Embiid winning the MVP, the Sixers, because they want to make that deep run into the playoffs. And I believe if they don't get to the Eastern Conference Finals this season, uh, I think that's going to be it for Doc Rivers. And you can sit there and you can say, no. Come on, they dealt with some injuries. Look what happened a couple of years ago with Simmons, and then they moved, moved to Harden. And then you have to look at some of these contracts, like Harris, Maxi was inconsistent. I don't want to hear any of that. It's been set up for Rivers to succeed. They brought in some of the said players that I mentioned because they wanted to give the complimentary pieces to Embiid because Embiid was saying, look, my career, I'm in the prime of my career. He's a big man. You know, and B's almost played a decade in the NBA. I, I think about that for a minute. This guy's almost played a decade in the NBA. It, it seems as though he's been around for like 15 years, has it not? So I can look at it in two different things. Listen, I can just say this. Um, I look at Embiid and I say he's as dominant as dominant can be. He's playing at such a high level. 
And if you wanted to make the case last year, he should have deserved it, should have earned it. They should have gave it to him. They didn't. This is not a makeup. He's been dominant. He's had months where he's putting up 40, 35, 38. He just put 50 up against arguably the best team in the Eastern Conference in the Boston Celtics. So from my estimation, for my money right now, 33.3, 10 rebounds, staggering numbers, shooting 54% from the floor for a big man, seven feet. You want to get on because of the load management, that's fine. Look how big the guy is. Sometimes he needs to rest. It, Joe Embiid is the MVP in the association, and there's no question about it. Just look at the look at the odds, right? As the odds have just went, he went from minus two fifty to a thousand, two fifty to six hundred to minus one thousand. What more do you want? That's telling you the betting public. Vegas already knows the worst kept secret. Give this guy the uh, trophy, will you? So uh, I'm all for it. I still believe that if this team does not make a deep run into the playoffs, it's going to spell the end for Doc Rivers. Fair, foul, out of bounds, inbounds, it doesn't matter. Uh, sometimes the message is not being heard. Or sometimes you just basically need to uh, make a change to make a change. And I know people don't want to hear that, but that's kind of where we're at right now with the Philadelphia 76ers and Doc Rivers. You have to make a deep run into the playoffs. You have to. And that means you have to at least get to the ECF. You got to get to the Eastern Conference Finals, man. If you don't get to the Eastern Conference Finals, it's an utter flat out disappointment of a season and really look you're starting to see you know milwaukee's showing a little bit of their warts boston you know we said boston's always beating philadelphia philadelphia got the better of them i don't know what cleveland and the knicks are going to do in the western conference denver's fading you know phoenix if you get a healthy engaged kevin durant they're going to be a, you know a, a tough out the clippers have owned the lakers the lakers are hanging around with lebron so uh you know this could be that one year where in the eastern conference you get a team like Milwaukee or Boston to trip up. And right now, if the Sixers are locked in at the three seed to say play the Brooklyn Nets, that's a matchup that favors the Philadelphia 76ers. And, and you know, again, you can rest and beat if you're already locked in and things are pretty much locked up as far as winning the award. So, uh, again, for my money, he's the MVP in the NBA. Uh, I don't believe that you should take votes away from him just because you want to see a player win three years in a row. That's foolish. I don't think you should take points away from him or votes away from him or make it a con because there's some load management here and there. We've seen it over the past. We saw it with Duncan, with San Antonio, when we, he was winning MVPs. Listen, we've seen it. LeBron's taken some nights off. Um, it's just not like it was back in the 80s and the 90s. I think it's pretty pronounced. You and I both know that. So that's kind of where we're at with the NBA Monday show, BYP. Uh, we'll start to really dive into these playoff matchups because season's coming into an end just like that. And we'll give you some thoughts and predictions on uh, really handicapping some of these teams that we like. Jonathan Marshall, our NBA insider, is going to join us. So we'll have a lot of fun with that. All right. Midway through a Saturday edition of BYP with Q. I'm your host, as always, Rich and you. And I appreciate the good folks over at TV 14.1 in Delmarva for keeping us locked in. And uh, you guys are awesome in the first state. Uh, we'll get to a little NFL on the other side because there are some news and notes that we have to kind of dissect and get into. But as always, hashtag EYP uh, on Twitter, on social media, at Rich Q on Q. I do want to get into the aforementioned NFL because if you're a Jet fan, you're still panicking. What the heck's going on with Baltimore and Lamar uh, Jackson? You got issues going on with Arizona. We don't know what's going on with Washington, right? The draft is around the corner, so I want to get into some needs of some of these teams on the other side. Keep it locked in to a Saturday edition of BYP right here on TV 14.1 uh, in Delmarva. And, of course, the YouTube channel, Rich Q on Q. We'll come back on the other side midway through this edition of Back Your Play from our very good friends over at Played Again Sports. Let me tell you about them before we hit the break. 1450 Clemens Bridge Road in Deptford, New Jersey. They're open seven days a week. The best used merchandise. Uh, they give you some great cash for used and new merchandise. Um, they got jerseys, they got unis, they got baseball gear, they got football gear, they got track and field cleats and lifting stuff and lacrosse and field hockey. And they pay really good premium cash for used uh, goods as well. They have in-store shopping and uh, also in-store pickup as well. So we always appreciate them sponsoring Saturday edition of PYP. All right, midway through, we'll step aside. We'll come back on the other side. We'll talk a little NFL with you guys to close things out.